Hey, what's up everybody? Wanted to share my latest module I built uh, using a Teensy 3.2. I had some goals for this project, one of which the first one was essentially I just wanted to make an aluminum panel and I'd never done that on my CNC machine. So, and I'll go more into the build process later in the video. Another goal was to implement full proactive tracking for a digital synth, which is something I hadn't tried before. So this is the first time doing that. And I decided to go, I, I've been eyeballing the uh, Acid Rain Chainsaw for a while, and I decided to try to make something similar to that. So it's kind of what, did I, what I ended up with there. So what does it have? What does it do? It uh, has 12 oscillators. It has three groups of four oscillators. Um, there's a saw, a square, a triangle, and a sine which you select with this wave button here, which we'll show in a second. Um, it has a main pitch knob and a detune knob, which detunes one of the oscillators from each group down a third and another one from each group up a third. Uh, it does have a filter and resonance. These are all just stock uh, Teensy audio library objects. So uh, it does have three volt per octave inputs that don't track together super well. Um, I did normalize the first one to the second two. I probably, I'm, it does have a MIDI input as well, which I mostly am gonna use. So I did want the option to, to tune each group of oscillators though with CV. And it works fairly well. It kind of depends on where you're at in the octave and what you set to the, the main pitch knob to. But um, yeah, the first, CV input is actually normal to negative 10 volts, which essentially uh, the normals to the other two. So if you're using MIDI, it kind of just flattens the CV input so you don't have to worry about them shifting around if you're just using MIDI. It does have a frequency input for the filter. This is a negative five to positive five. Um, the wave button selects between the waves. Like I said, it has audio output and MIDI in, which is on defaulted to channel five. You can change that in the code if you like, but let's listen to it. So it starts off with just the saw, and you can hear the detune. Well, let me put it to a higher. Ooh. So you can hear that third up and third down. But because it is MIDI, I can play it polyphonically. And there's that filter. And we'll turn up some resonance here. Turn on full resonance. Yeah, so I had to turn down the amplitude quite a bit when you crank that resonance to avoid digital clipping because it sounded pretty nasty before. Um, yeah, we can hear the other waveforms. Put in like a chord. So that's saw, square, and a triangle, and finally a sign, which is pretty quiet. So yeah, it does go low enough to be a uh, LFO if you want to do it that way. Um, you could just crank down the pitch and uh, you could use a volt per octave into the input to actually change the LFO speed. Yeah, that I think is most of the features. Um, I was just going to show, maybe I'll show some sound demos of it in more of a musical context and uh, then the build process.
Okay, so this is the very beginning of the build process. What I'm doing is sending an oscillator clear across the room and into the MCP6004. This is not connected to the Teensy yet. I'm just making sure that the voltage is scaling down to where it will not harm the Teensy. So here we have all the audio objects on the left there from the Teensy GUI and then the code on the right which is scaling that CV voltage coming in to one volt per octave. Here I'm uh, sending the oscillator a sequence and just testing out the one volt per octave. And then also checking the detune knob, seeing how that sounds. And here I'm just kind of laying out the components on this protoboard, getting an idea of where everything's going to go. Obviously this did change in the final from this version. And just kind of marking the width of the protoboard so I can break it. And here I'm trying to break the protoboard into a straight line. This worked all right, but I really should have probably scored it first. I had a clean break. Uh, it broke pretty jagged and I had to clean it up quite a bit, but still kind of trying to find a good method to do this. And we have both sides now, fairly even. And this uh, project uses two proto boards sandwiched together. And here's the layout I ended up with in the end for the front panel. This is actually missing the button that I later put on. And here is actually some components soldered on to the top board and I made this little header connection to connect to the second board and wrote down what each pin goes to. And here I'm testing out each of the well, per octave inputs with uh, some quantized sequences coming from Pamela's new workout. Um, this is fairly close to the final. At this stage, it still didn't have the wave select button. And I believe I was using an onboard LFO instead of the onboard filter. So it did change a little bit. So here's all of the final connections. As you can see, a whole bunch of wires going everywhere. I have the button on there at this point. It's uh, pushed into a socket, just so it pushes up enough past the panel and can be pressed. Um, yeah, here's the bottom board, with the Eurorack power connector on it. And Teensy, a couple other chips on there. Yeah, that's the back. And for the MIDI, I like to do it on these little jumpers, just in case um, I need to switch from MIDI, TRS MIDI A or B. I can just swap the pins around. It makes it really easy. And the uh, final board sandwiched together. Huge mess of wires, but everything works. So, the panel. Uh, the panel was one of the main reasons I started this project, just because I wanted to experiment with using my diamond drag bit to do the engraving in the aluminum, and also just cut out an aluminum panel, which is something I had never tried to cut aluminum with my CNC machine before. So the engraving went really well. Um, unfortunately, it just wasn't showing all that much afterwards. I think on the next one, I'm probably going to paint the aluminum first and then do the engraving. Um, yeah, because it ended up not showing all that much in certain light in that first shot where I'm explaining everything about it. It kind of looks terrible because I since sanded it a little bit and tried to put some aluminum blackener into it and it just didn't work out because I had previously painted inside of the engravings and yeah. Unfortunately the panel was kind of a fail for this one, but I did learn quite a bit and uh, I think the next one I'll probably paint first and then engrave. So yeah, after the engraving, 
the cutting of the aluminum actually went really well. I might need to tweak some settings on my CNC machine, but it seemed to not have any problems whatsoever. And here is fresh off the CNC machine. It's got the engravings in there, all the holes, everything lined up pretty well. And here it is, all put together. And again, this is before I sanded the panel on the front and kind of messed it up, but all in all, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, I'll definitely be painting the panel before trying to engrave the next one just to see how that goes. But yeah, that's the whole build process. I don't usually film this much of it, so hopefully that is helpful to some folks. It definitely added some time to the project. But yeah, as usual, the code should be available on my GitHub as well as schematics. And yeah, thanks for watching.